All right, this is going to be notes one of Calc AB. So uh, I should tell you up front that if you didn't have me for math analysis, uh, Calc AB really probably truly like things that you need to know probably starts. Um, you'd want to start at math analysis notes 18. Um, so you'd probably want to go back and do notes 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, I think. Um, before you get here, it's a good idea to review those no matter where you learn this stuff. Um, but especially if, uh, if we have never met, if we are not acquainted. Uh, so let's take a look at this. This is page one of Calc AB notes. So limit definition of a derivative. So, uh, it's my hope that you have taken the time to review the limit definition, um, and, and how we can use it. So we're going to do some problems here to kind of refresh that, uh, and make sure that you were kind of true to yourself as you were doing it. So. Here we go, we're gonna use the limit definition. So f prime of x is, we're gonna use the limit as h approaches zero of f of x, nope, of f of x plus h, look at me getting it wrong, minus f of x over h. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. Now let's actually do that. So this will be the limit as h approaches zero f of x plus h is going to be x plus h squared plus 3 x plus h plus 1 minus, I recommend you put the second part, oh, the minus f of x, always put it in parentheses. Um, even if you don't really need it, it's going to save you from making mistakes in the long run. And that's a really important thing to do to avoid making mistakes. Um, so let's see if we can do this. So limit, I'm going to expand, I guess. So it'll be x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 3x plus 3h plus 1 minus x squared minus 3x minus 1, jeez, all over h. All right, at this point, if everything that doesn't have an h doesn't cross out, you did it wrong. So let's look for the things that cross out. I got an x squared, a minus x squared. Great. Uh, I have a 3x and I have a minus 3x. We're looking for that. And then we have a 1 and a minus 1. You can see the only things we didn't highlight have h's, so we didn't definitely make a mistake. Uh, we still could have made a mistake. I mean, you know, things happen. So let's say equals the limit. I'm going to actually cancel a 1h from every term in the numerator with the h in the denominator at this point. So I'm just going to say parentheses. Uh, 2xh over h is 2x, plus h squared over h is h, plus 3h over h is 3, and that's all we got. Now we take the limit, and I'll say that f prime of x is 2x plus 3, which, if I'm being honest with you, I was expecting because we do know the power rule, and the power rule would tell us the derivative of this is the derivative of x squared is 2x to the first. The derivative of 3x is 3, and the derivative of 1 is 0. So 2x plus 3 makes a lot of sense. Let's do the next one. All right, so same process, except since this is called y, I have a choice. I could call it y prime, or I could call it dy dx. I'm going to go with dy dx just to like get that going. Like you, You're going to use that notation a lot, so why not, why not on day one? All right, it's going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of... So it's going to be f of x plus h minus f of x over h. The function's not named f of x, so I'm just going to like dive in and do it. So every x that I see becomes an x plus h plus 3 minus the original function, which is just x plus 3 and divided by h. Okay, now I have to remember what to do with this. Well, generally speaking, when you're taking limits, if there's something you can rationalize, try rationalizing it and see what happens. So I'm gonna multiply the top and the bottom of this thing by radical x plus h plus three plus, so the plus goes between the square roots. It doesn't, you, you never change something inside of a square root when you're doing a conjugate. Um, so we got this and then over the exact same thing. So we're multiplying by a really weird form of one which is what you do a lot of. If you remember trig identities is where you've maybe first learned about multiplying by weird forms of one. 
Uh, all right, so it's gonna be the limit as h approaches zero of, now the whole idea is that uh, we kind of end up with, let me write it a little weirdly, we get a minus b and a plus b, and we're multiplying those. So that's always gonna be a squared minus b squared. So let me just, a squared, so is going to give me, I like to put them in parentheses. So this is a squared and then minus b squared is gonna be the quantity x plus three. You never want to expand the thing you're not rationalizing. So we're rationalizing the numerator. So I expanded the numerator. Expanding the denominator would almost, uh, I think actually always be a waste of time because the next thing you're gonna end up doing is factoring it. So never expand something that you're gonna to have to end up factoring. X plus three. I don't know, this is like an awkwardly long fraction bar. So let me just go back and pretend I didn't do that. Okay, so we have this. Uh, we can clean it up. So clean up the numerator limit as h approaches zero. So we have x minus x. There's a three and a minus three. So we actually just have h over h square root x plus h plus three plus radical x plus three. Well, now it's like awkwardly short. Can't win. Um, all right, we cancel. So technically, we do want to write one more one more limiting step to get one over. Let's see if we get it right this time. X plus H plus three plus radical X plus three. Okay, if H is equal to zero now, no problems, right? Let H equal zero, we get one over radical X plus three plus radical X plus three. That's one over two of those, two radical x plus three, and that is the value of dy dx. So that's my final answer on that. I think what I'm gonna do, uh, what I do in a lot of my videos is the final answer, I will highlight in kind of like this pinkish color, uh, just to like, you know, make sure, make sure you can find your way to the end, you know? Uh, I'm gonna keep going, I'm gonna do, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do one more of these, and then maybe cut this video there. So what are we finding, right? We're finding the derivative. Maybe you recall the derivative is the instantaneous rate of change of the function at a point. It is the slope of the function at the point. It's the slope of the line tangent to the function at that point. So a lot of stuff, a lot of prerequisite stuff or stuff that I assume that you know. Um, and I assume you know it because I assume you're done with math analysis. And if you did that, you got like a good basis in this stuff. So let's do this one. All right. So f prime of x is going to be the limit as h approaches zero. Uh, so should I write it out this time? It's like I, I take the cheap way out when I can't conveniently write it. It's going to be f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And now we're going to actually do it. The limit as h approaches zero. f of x plus h. So it's 1 over x plus h plus 2 minus one over x plus two, because that's f of x, and all over h. Okay, so how do we simplify this? Well, it's gonna be, what I want you to do is focus just on the numerator, like no one cares about the denominator. We're only looking at the numerator right now. So the numerator, is like this, and what we're gonna do is get a common denominator in the numerator, right? So that's gonna be x plus h plus two times x plus two. So what's missing? So from the first fraction, I need an x plus two in the denominator, but I can't just multiply by that. I need to multiply by x plus two over x plus two. So I'll end up with x plus two, and then there's a minus. Now what's missing from the second function? It's missing x plus h plus two. So I multiply the top and the bottom of the second fraction uh, by that, and that'll give me minus. I'm gonna put a quantity x plus h plus two, and then that's all over x plus, so I'm gonna bring the h up into this denominator. Your ability to work with complex fractions uh, will be a huge advantage, assuming you have the ability. Uh, if you are lacking that ability, develop it. That's, that's my best advice. Find some complex fractions and practice simplifying them. All right, 
I have an x minus x. I have a 2 minus 2. So I actually have negative h over h, the quantity x plus h plus 2, x plus 2. All right, I should really do um, one more step, I think, one more limit step, and then I'll get the answer. And this is, uh, this is crammed in here, and that's a shame. Limit as h approaches 0. So it'll be negative 1 over uh, x. So the h's have canceled. x plus h plus 2, x plus 2. Where to go, where to go? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make it look like this never happened. I'm gonna take everything, I'm gonna move it over there, and then I'm gonna take this here and move it up here. I'm gonna act like, you know, I'm gonna act like I did that on purpose, do this. Okay, so I'm good. Um, I don't know about you, if you were following along, spacing it exactly the same way. If h is zero, I get negative one over, x plus 2 times x plus 2. So I just get negative 1 over the quantity x plus 2 squared. And what was that? That's f prime of x. So I feel like, because we, we went on a real journey with this one, I feel like we should write this. Negative 1 over the quantity x plus 2 squared. And I think that's done. And so this right here is telling me the slope of the original function, the original function that we were dealing with is this function. So at any value x that's in the domain of this function that we just highlighted, the slope of the curve is going to be this function down here evaluated at that x value. So if x is equal to uh, negative 1, right? At x equals negative 1, the slope of f of x is negative 1 over negative 1 plus 2 is negative 1, is positive 1, sorry squared is one, negative one divided by one is negative one. So at x equals negative one, the slope of that curve is negative one. That's what we're finding. We're trying to find the slope of a curve, the instantaneous rate of change of that curve. Um, so there's a lot, there's a lot to remember, there's a lot to do, but the limit definition of a derivative, super important, right? Derivatives tell us slopes, we know increasing, decreasing, all kinds of things. You gotta be able to find derivatives to talk about that. So this is a good review of the limit definition of the derivative. Um, I'll be back in the next video and uh, we're just gonna do more. So I hope to see you there.